know, folks, there's no doubt in my mind, fish in big lakes, well, can be very, very intimidating. There's a big word. The reason why is because there's so much water. Only 10% only of that water is going to be productive when it comes to fishing. So I'm often, often, often times I'm asked, Richard, how are you locating these crappie up in shallow water during the winter? How do you do it? Well, folks, uh, our main forage here in Tennessee River Lakes and all the way down, up and down the Tennessee River is shad and that's primarily what these crappie are feeding on especially in the fall and in the winter what i do is i'm always constantly keeping up where the shad are the migration pattern or patterns of shad uh, and what i do is i study the water temperature the time of the year and location and i found more than not Usually on the north side of the lake, that's where most of the shad will be up shallow. On the south side, the shad will be deeper. So what I do is I idle around with my electronics, and you don't have to have fancy electronics to do that. A matter of fact, on one boat I have some good electronics. On the other boat, the cheapest depth finder you can you can buy. It. But these units will pick up shad. They're accurate when it comes to that. So you're looking for the depth of water the shad are in. Once you find the shad, say if they're anywhere old from six to eight feet of water, then all you have to do is catch a, a couple crappie. Use this bait by covering water. Use it for covering water. Let me put it that way, like you would a spinner bait. Once you catch a couple fish, Pay attention to how deep that fish was and just simply keep repeating that over and over again. It's amazing how many crappie will actually jump up shallow during the winter. Most people are catching them deep with forward-facing forward -facing sonar. Hey, but I love the fish and catch crappie shallow. I target these fish. And, you know, like I've always preached, there can be several different patterns on any given day, on any given lake. There he is. That's a little bitty crappie. You know, folks, that's the smallest one I've caught. In a long time, he's barely hooked, too. Quit quit and that's about a nine and a half almost 10 inch fish but let's let him go right here and i want to talk about this because this is real real important now this is a finesse underspin right here as y'all can see it, it's a it's different eat i've caught three crappies so far and i've could i could have caught more by now but what i'm doing I'm changing colors, I'm changing um, di different underspins, different companies that make them. And in that, the blades are different. This is a willow leaf. This blade right here is more for flash. Um, I caught, and with the Roadrunner, um, I, ca I caught one with the Roadrunner, excuse me, and one with the Big Eye underspin. And the big eye underspin has a hammered blade, but it's willow leaf. The uh, Roadrunner has the Indiana blade. So, and, and as far as colors, you know, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Whatever jig color that you select on an underspin, as long as it's a shad pattern or color, white or white and silver combination or something like that, you're, it's going to be hard to beat that now. But now, as far as, you know, they just seem to be hitting everything. I mean, so far. But that's because the fish are, not because they're active, because they're not. They're not real active. It's in the middle of the day. 
actually. And they're they're not they're not real active, but they're hitting these for the simple reason that there's a blade on them. That's how deadly underspins are. So what you know what what is the point I'm trying to get at? The point is, um, you know, I think that a fisherman needs to see what fish will hit at times. Now, I know what they will hit. This bait that I have on right here, uh, I'm probably going to throw it a whole lot because the strikes that I've gotten off of this, this bait or have been getting in the last few days has been hard strikes. So, um, it, it's, just, it's just like that. Some underspins are better than others. See, there's another fish. That's a little crappie that right there. That fish is way up there. <laughs> He's shaking his head. Quit. Look at there. He was way up there and about he might have been two feet deep. But um it just depends and in some days I've seen it where the big eye underspin would outcatch a finesse underspin or the road runner. And I've seen days where the road runner will would outcatch the, the others. Y'all see what I'm saying. I'm having a hard time talking, explaining things because I'm really focusing on what's going on. That fish was real shallow. When it drops down there about 55 degrees and stays stable, these fish will no doubt group up in the tight, tight schools. And when you find them, you can just catch one after either another, and I'm talking about. But a slow, steady wind is all you need on the underspin. Mentioned it many, many a time. When you got a bait like this that has a spinner, where well, the spinner is the action. And that's all the action you really need. There he is. Now then. Well, we're going to be able to catch up to him or what? Now then, right here, there, old boy. Let's see how he's hooked. All right, he's hooked pretty good. Well, no, that actually wasn't. Boy, that was a big carp that jumped up under that dock. That's two. That one right there and one down. Three docks down. One, two, three. That one way out there on the other side of that point. Carp's been jumping. That makes me want a carp fish, but that's a I quit. That's a respectable fish right there, no doubt. He hammered that blade. Or spin. They call them underspins. I call them blades. Because that's actually what what they are. They're really really a great way to fish when you're covering water and I have I've covered a lot of water but I don't do it in a quick way like um, it near as quick as you would like fishing for bass I slow the wee down for crappie but I'm still covering that water combing it you know remember these crappie they move around a lot so That's one reason why I do this. They don't stay no place too long at all. Especially, there's another fish. That's a crappie too. He's doing that head shake deal. They don't stay nowhere very long. They're on the move. on these In these big lakes like this, you can forget about it. Absolutely forget about them staying in an area 
too long. That's a good one right there. I'm on and have been on a good bike here for a while. Just a blessing from the Lord. I have had a ball with these crappie. Now, I'm not kidding. I have. It's been a lot of fun, folks. They're not very deep. They're probably, in reality, probably suspended about three feet deep. Or four and just coming up and just slamming that bait. I fish high. I would recommend anybody to fish high. A little bit high when it comes to crappie. They do feed up. They would rather feed up than feed down. Now, they will feed down. But they'd rather feed up for the most part. So you can get by fishing. Mmm. Had a lick right there. You can get by fishing high. That the clearer the water, the higher you can get by with fishing. That crappie magnet right there. And uh, that Z-Man, those Z-Man baits um, are my two favorites when it comes to putting on the back of these baits. Uh, putting up, as a combination, I mean, y'all, excuse me. Boom, there's one right there. There's a good one. I set the hook too hard. You ain't got to do that, folks. Yeah, that's a little better fish right there. It's what I'm used to, used to catching here lately anyway. I'm getting spoiled. Golly, is that fish not cutting the rug? Y'all see that, don't you? Some crappie fight harder than others. Some of them are lazy. And some of them just fight a lot harder than others. There's no doubt about it. That's a good, solid fish right there. And that underspin, y'all don't see it. Y'all wondering, where's that underspin? Look where it is. Way down in yonder. But it ain't in a bad place. I got something to get that out. There we go. Now that is a little bit better. Let's let him go. Be easy with their little jaws. As long as that spinner, that blade is spin, you're in good shape. There's a lot of um, a lot of them out there that's just junk. Uh, and if you don't watch it, uh, you'll 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 buy some that has paint in the components, and the things won't spin. If they don't spin. You're not going to catch any fish with them. I mean, it disputes the purpose of an underspin, which is probably, like I've said many times, my number one bait for the bigger crappie. There he is. Golly. My goodness. This must be a real big crappie right here. Golly. Y'all see that? I don't know why they're so darn mean today, but they are. Big old crappie. Where you at? There he is. I mean, oh, he just barely hooked. I'm gonna have to get in here with him. Barely hooked. I don't know how. As hard as he hit that. Doggone thing. Quit. Golly. Oh my goodness. Wow. Bigger than I thought. A lot bigger than I thought. Wow, way what a fish. That is what we're talking about right there. Let's let him go. Okay. He hit that, and I got the drag set pretty loose, but a little bit too tight. I'm gonna loosen it off right now. That braid don't have any stretch. Uh, 
So when you set the hook and you got a main crappie like that that wants to go the other way, they can rip that hook just like that. Uh, that's why mono, I used to stress that a whole lot years ago that mono is better for crappie and I still believe that folks I'm not going to change that uh, because of their mouth it is so weak that, that mono will actually stretch when that fish surges like that and it'll keep that hook from tearing out that's pretty well fact but the the braid that vantage with braid is especially this I'm using eight pound test braid and I usually do when I'm crappie fishing eight pound braid with a six pound test fluorocarbon leader sometimes I use a long leader sometimes a short one uh, but what I'm getting at you can it handles so well on these spinning reels braid does it's hard not to use it There he is. Now that wasn't that hard of a bite. He just sort of eat it. Be crappie though. Stripping line. They. It's a mule. It may be the biggest one. I believe it is. I believe that's a sow cow and a half. Yeah, I knew it would happen. I knew I'd catch a crappie this big or, or bigger, but this is a sow cow right here. Yes, sir, Ray. Look at there, folks. Let's get it here and really look. I want y'all to look what a crappie. Now that is a good one. Okay. I'll show that to y'all. That's a 15 inch plus. 15 inch plus. Uh, quite a bit over two pounds. Look how deep that is. Y'all see that? D, that fish wanted it. Second of all, look at there, what a crappie. Now, that ain't no baby. That is not a baby crappie. Goodness, let's get him loose and get him back. I tell you, that was a lot of fun. That fish right there stretched my strain. Right there. Now, that is a trophy crappie right there. And there's some bigger out there. Some were, they're bigger. The doggone things is bigger. Some were. Whoa! What a fish. I wish the sun was out. We could watch him swim off. That's a heck of a fish right there. Let's let him go. Y'all see that? He's wanting to jump back in here. That was a mean fish right there. I knew that was a big fish. That's how them big crappie fight. They'll strip. They'll strip some line. No doubt. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm gonna fish that thoroughly. Y'all know this as well as I do. If you don't, well, let it be written in the book of crappie. When you catch a big fish like that, there's always positively some more big ones around, usually, when you're in a situation like this. Okay. Let's catch another one. Look up yonder, Elmer. I believe that's an eagle. And I believe there's two or three of them up there and they're gonna poop on us. <laughs> we better get on out of here. <laughs> yeah. A good crappie man that likes the crappie a lot always recognizes several different things. Depth, time of year, colors, where the sun's positioned, 
direction of the wind. There's so many different factors to take into account when it comes to fishing. And all of them are very important to solve the puzzle. Now, for the most part, folks, how I'm catching these fish is I'm staying very, very close to the drop-off. You know, very close to where my bait's going to go over the top of that drop-off. Drop That's where these fish has been. They've been right over the top. Most of them's been right over the, the top of the actual drop. There's another fish on the drop. And they're, and I use this term a lot, they're just milling around. It's a good one. All these fish has been quality fish. Most of them have. I'm surprised the white crappie haven't showed up, though. They've all been black crappie. But that's okay. That is a big son of a gun. I didn't... <laughs> oh, me. Let's go ahead and lip him right here. There we go. Oh. Big old mule. Ever, oh, that he just shook it out. That fish is way, way over two pounds. A uh, way over. Just let him go. Well, folks, it started off pretty rough, but that's the sport of fishing. I ended up still finding some crappie and some pretty doggone good ones. It's a method and a sport second to none. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. I say the same thing over and over again. I know that. But there's no words that sums it up better than that. Y'all have been absolutely remarkable. Thank y'all. And God bless each and every one of y'all. Hey. Woo. Woo. I can't help it because... Adrenaline is something that, that, that it's just a powerful element. It's like electricity. It's like water. It's powerful. It is very, very powerful. And remember, go fishing when you can because it's good food.